Everyone over here with Menachem Biznatsky, FYI. Really, really close friends. I've never had a repeat person on. The work that Menachem does is helping people work through their own redemption. I think it's a little underrated that you have the ability to just kick it back. I don't think most people know that. I'm like, yeah, I'm realizing that you have a stash. Weird stash. Child molester vibes are going strong <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> the proper use of femininity is for women to like make men feel really good and inspire them to care about the Aguna. Like, don't give them less sex, give them more sex. T-shirts are getting ready to be made. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptance is a space in time where a person can look at themselves in the mirror and say, this is what I'm doing right, this is what I'm doing wrong, this is what I can't do better, I don't have the capacity, this is where I need to ask for help. So we go into the clubhouse, and Trump's there, he like, comes and sits down next to us, just shooting the shit with us. He's one of the boys. He was really funny. The most privileged job that I have is running the living room, which is a series of clubhouses for young adults who are in recovery from substance abuse and addiction. I didn't grow up religious. I went to yeshiva, and they like very quickly introduced me to like really toxic forms of shame, and I took to it to some degree. Zionism itself is a farce. It doesn't exist. You explain on that? Wait, it's, what? Everyone has a message. I have something to say. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Mislabeled. Uh, number, I don't know, 70 or whatever it is. Coming off the Vivek podcast, I want to thank everyone for watching, uh, doing fantastic numbers, so thank you so, so much. A lot, a lot of changes here, obviously. Goes without saying. Uh, changes that honestly totally suck. We were picking up some big rhythm. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes in life, you take two steps forward and one step back, and that seems to be kind of the uh, the situation right here. With that being said, we're moving upward and we're moving onward, and we are going to bring another great co-host on, uh, God willing, and we will continue to make great progress and bring continue and continue to bring great content okay in the meantime in the interim while i look for a co-host we're going to be doing a variety of different type of concepts that i haven't did done till now kind of just like chill with it flow happens to be i have my very good friend here the one and only uh sam warren who was a previous oh. previous co-host happens to be back in new york for the weekend for some weddings yes sir um looking forward to gonna be here perm also yeah perm also always here help I was gonna explain when 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 Shmuley comes in for like a weekend for like a wedding, yeah. you meet. There's always he always gets in a party. Perm, of course, is the next weekend. Yeah. Stay through perm. We there's yeah, always there's always there is a calculation to my chaos <laughs> at all times. And label play, and label uh, pays the uh, cost. Correct. I mean, yeah, I try to if I can wherever I can. Um, I make problems. Let's just say it that way. All right, I make a convincing argument, and she was labeled. You can't do this. All right, fine. I'll but he it. gets an interim co-host for for a couple episodes. <laughs> exactly. All right, but you know something. This is the first time. You should just know. I've never had a repeat person on. I had you yeah. on Menachem. Everyone over here with Menachem Biznatsky, FYI. Yeah. Yes. Uh, really, really close friends. Firstly, there's not many people that I respect the hell out of their opinion. You definitely are one of them. Oh, so I'm truly honored to have you here. Yeah. But I had you on way, way back in the original yeah. mislabeled, the second podcast that me and Shmueli ever did, yeah. where people really thought we were crazy. It was like, yeah, oh, yeah. label thinks anyone gives a damn about his opinion. They still and, say we, and when we thought that everyone did give a damn, and even if they didn't give a damn, they're the ones that wrong that they didn't give a damn. Well, <laughs> like, now, they, they I, should they should give a damn about our opinion. <laughs> like, it was when, like, the whole Chaim Walder thing came out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that was great. We were like darshaning on Chaim Walder, like we had like an opinion to give. Right. Like oh, I was crazy. Amazing. I remember being at work for like an hour and a half and just writing down like opinions, like like point after point, like clear cut. Like I have to get all of these out because I'm like the voice of the people right now. Yeah, yeah, no, those are good times. This was the hubris this, on us at that point. This was we're talking right now. What are we talking? 20, 2022 or twenty twenty one even? This is yeah, a long time ago. Very two 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 and a half years ago. Yeah. yeah. So we had you on the second one. Then yeah. we the podcast. Obviously stopped for like six months, then we brought on Zach, and we really started, you know, that's where I really considered the start. And then we had you on again. Yes, that was very kind. So at that time, I was like, all right, you're kind of like the first repeat person, but not really a repeat, because the first time, you weren't really yeah. on. This right. time, you're most definitely a wow, repeat guest. That's very... The first one, <laughs> by the way. And, and I have people that call me up all the time, why don't you have this person on again, why don't you have that person? I'm like, listen, right now, I'm, I'm only 70 episodes into this thing, like, I want to get new people, like, right. you know? But... I'm really happy. If there's anyone that I want to do a repeat episode with, it's you, and that's why you're here. So, uh, look, so I'm a repeat co-host. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, we we were talking last week, and you're talking about your, you know, your host finding challenge, and then we were like schmoozing about me doing this, and I told you I don't want to come on as a as an ex expert witness. 
But uh, to come on and hang out with you and Fabreng and uh, talk about life, that's interesting to me. So I guess it's a repeat, but maybe a little different. Yeah, the first time you're saying the first time around, it's true. He came on as a therapist in that capacity, and this time around, we're just we're chilling. We're yeah, not. the second time I just put out a book, which you were very kind to have me. Yes, and we right, pitched I the book. That. that was really nice. Uh, so I was kind of talking about that and kind of like uh, talking about my professional work. But, but I'm excited to be here today. I think it's a little underrated that you have the ability to just kick it back. I don't think most people know that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I don't know. No, there's, other, there's a lot of other big therapists. Again, I'm not saying you have to throw shade at them, but there's yeah. a lot of other big therapists that need to keep up, pers up a persona, which is right. ironic given that they're a therapist and the entire probably context of what they tell all their clients all day or patients it's is like that like... Multiple parts. Yeah, just like, just like, yeah, just be yourself, be authentic and like let go. And yet there's a... Definitely a group that can't let go publicly, I think. I mean, I mean, there's a posture that you have when you're a therapist because, like, you you have to be somebody in the room. Um, I think people can get lost in that in the room, and then it, and then it, and then they get lost in it sometimes out of the room. Right. And I think both are bad. You know, I think a therapist. You know, I mean, I think when I think some of that happens when you're like when you're not really working on yourself, so you can't really bring an authentic self, then you have to like posture. And then and then you feel like you have to posture outside. I'm not a rabbi, I'm, like, I'm just a mental health professional. I'm not like some kind of religious authority or spiritual authority or moral authority. Right. You know, that partially relates to how people associate the therapist, which is funny to me. Really? Yeah, people will say things like, my, my therapist told me, as if like it's like, the. I mean like, as if it's like, I don't know, coming down from on high. Yeah, like it's very odd. Like your therapist is supposed to be somebody who's really excellent at creating space for you to kind of figure things out. Maybe they have advice because they have life experience. But like if like if you have your therapist up on a pedestal, you or he is doing something wrong. That's a fascinating take, by the way. Why? Cause I, I, cause I do some, I definitely do that sometimes where I, like, I see my therapist as someone who's a very wise person that yeah. if, if they say something, I definitely hold it in higher regard than what the yeah. next person says to me a hundred percent. Yeah. It's like this, uh, impulse of Jews to, uh, look for a savior, which <laughs> we'll get to. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll definitely get there. This is, this is actually a fact. I want to circle back to this. I actually want to circle back to this because this is, fat. the question then becomes who are the people that you look up to? Right. I mean, who are the people that you should, I, I would think you say that there are people that are mentor like people in everyone's life that people should have. I would hope that people look up to their therapist. But one of the things that's unique about a therapist, I said like rabbi, but like there's people that like are operating at a level beyond like the way other people are operating. Uh, you know, within the context of the Jewish community, Orthodox community of like tzaddikim, like big, very big people, right? And we expect more from them. Okay. But most other people that we venerate or put up on pedestals are just guys, like a little better at this, a little worse at that, right? And a lot of problems come from when we like kind of want the people we admire for some aspect of their lives to be that in all the areas of their life. And then they fall short of that and then we're let down. So I think that... So I don't think you have to put someone doesn't to be your savior in order to admire them and respect them. Right. This right. is great. Okay. I, we're, we're getting to something that I, I know yeah. we wanted to discuss. First thing I wanted yeah. to discuss though, I want to a little bit go in order. Yeah. I, I've wondered a lot recently about, especially, and I don't want to get into October 7th Israel war. Like that's not what I want Hell to do. No. Hell no. We, we've over, that is dead at this point. I mean, it's very not dead. And I know people are like, oh my God. It's such a bad You did joke. it. You did it. It's but terrible. I know how everyone's gonna, but I know why everyone's going to literally be like, oh my God, how can you say you don't want to talk about October 7th? Well, in, well we, already, we already had a podcast on it. We figured it out. So we don't need to have another one where we figure it out again. In, in total honesty, I, I have... I have an audience and they're all going to leave if I talk yeah. about it over seven. That's more important than hostages right now. No. Oh I'm joking. <laughs> but oh we all talk, all yeah. jokes aside, all jokes yeah. aside, because that is serious, but I don't want to get into the details of uh, of the war, but I do want to ask, uh, you know, a very simple thing that this has brought out. One of the things that the October 7th has brought out to me, which is fascinating by what's going on, uh, specifically the media response, yeah. is what I always see as, in my opinion, an in inability from people in general this could sound really you like really arrogant but to me it's like they you? can't do one plus one <laughs> they can't do like like one plus one does not equal two and yeah. i say that in regards to let's just say what's going on with the war obviously of 
you know, people now blaming Israel yeah. as far as the, you know, how could they dare kill 30,000 people? And they're now, they have become the bad guys, which we knew was going to happen. Let's just be real. That was obvious already October 7th, the second after, right. the, you know, the attack happened was that Israel is going to be the bad guy. How long is it going to take? Right? right. But there's some sort of inability. And this is not just with the war. It obviously is in a lot of other areas right. within politics and life where there's some sort of miss, like you're going straight, straight, and then there's just like a right turn that happens somewhere along the way, which lands you in a ditch, and like thinking right. for a lot of people. Most recently we had, uh, just to give a small example, this had Chuck Schumer. I don't know if you saw He got up there, nope. Senate Majority Leader, he gets up there and he gives a whole speech basically telling, calling basically for elections in Israel, which is insane if you think about it, a total, a foreign, he, he's an American calling for, you know, taking a, you know, big fat shit on Netanyahu, saying that he's the, you know, the problem for peace. Not saying that Hamas is the issue for peace, literally saying Netanyahu is the, the, the issue and the reason why peace is not happening. So to me, that would be an example of this, like a classic, like how do you not see like what you're saying? Right. So I want to understand what your thoughts are as an outsider who's watching this, like where this comes from. Like what compels Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer to do that? What, what's happening in his brain? Is this something that he knows? Right. That that is. There are some people who can't help themselves and don't even realize they're doing it. In my opinion, they, they, one plus one, they're just blinded. It becomes three. Let's, right. see the, let's see the guy, the Palestinian in Gaza. One plus one to him equals three. Can't help him. No matter what you'll tell him, he's not going to understand. Fine. Right. That, 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 but a guy like Chuck Schumer, a lot of Americans who are now obviously. The question: I mean, do you think Chuck Schumer is an anti-Semite? Do you right. think all the leftists are anti-Semites? I'm not going to go so far and just you know, throw that label at them. I think that there's some misunderstanding of where they all of a sudden see a presser and a press, like see a victim or what's perceived a victim to be the victim when in fact they're probably not. And they can't understand, right? They end up taking a right turn somewhere along the way and landing up in a ditch in concept of their thinking. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm asking you where you think, like why you think that happens and do you think Chuck Schumer is someone that falls into that? In I mean, I, I think Schumer did an interesting thing because he got up and he gave his long speech he he mentioned Hamas as a barrier to peace, which is a funny thing to do. And then he also mentioned Netanyahu, almost equating him as also a barrier to speech. And then actually today, something happened where uh, Netanyahu wanted to address Senate Democrats mm -hmm. and and Schumer didn't allow him to. Yeah, right? which is a very funny thing. So so clearly there's like a there's a clear like war going on between Chuck Schumer. And, and Bibi Netanyahu. Now, the funny thing is like what, I, I feel like the question that you're asking, which is funny, maybe like put the question back to you, is like, is like what compels someone like Chuck Schumer, who's a, a Jew, right? And he uh, presents his, uh, himself as, a, as, a, as a, a strong Jewish person to fall into the trap of, let's say, creating moral equivalency between... Netanyahu and Hamas, right? And not only that, but in order to do that, which is, I think, kind of what's going on here, in order to do that, he has to, like... Like, Hamas is a very obvious villain, right? It's very, very obvious. Like, you're watching, like, a like a James Bond movie, and Hamas is, like, the villain. He's there. Right. Like, they're, they're clearly villains. Like, they've done horrible, villainous things. I'm like, you can't... It's, like, it, they're... That's an obvious It's thing. an easy argument to make. Right. But if you want to create moral equivalency between Hamas and Netanyahu, you have to make Netanyahu into this like really horrible monster. When like it's very very it's a very hard case to make. Meaning for all the things that you might think about Bibi Netanyahu, whether you're for or against, or you question his like policies or you whatever, you don't like the way he deals with things or his strong grip on you know Likud and power, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He he's not a villain. He's not an obvious villain. So Schumer like goes to the extreme and just like goes after him and says like, he's the barrier to peace and we have to call for elections in Israel. And and he he postured as if like, like well, I spoke from my heart and this is something I thought about for months and months and I felt like I had to say this. Like, yeah, this is like... So much like... Bullshit. Yes. Like, exactly. <laughs> like, just, just, yeah. So what compels someone to do that, right? What compels someone to do that? And part of what you're saying, which is I think interesting, is like... Sometimes in life we make things overcomplicated, and sometimes in life they're rather simple, right? I think this gets into some of your like uh, the politics that you swirl around. I mean, you just have Vivek on, and you you kind of have talked a lot about Trump, and I feel like that's something that he does that interestingly drives his opponents in the, on the left crazy because yeah. he takes 
things that the left loves to make complicated. Yes. And he makes them very, very simple. Right. Like build a wall. Like, and it's just, and, <laughs> and they don't know what to do with themselves. Right. right? Like, it's like we're going to be out of jobs. And they're like, well, <laughs> it, it's really context. It, 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 you know, like, anti, like, is Jew hatred like anti Semitism? It depends on the context. It's like they want to make things so complicated. Now, is, is, is that the problem? Or is their desire to make things complicated just a way to kind of, perpetuate their own mm -hmm. agenda right right meaning is it that like is it that that chuck schumer falls into the trap of making things complicated donald trump likes to make them simple let's say in this argument and chuck schumer likes to make them complicated or is chuck schumer making things complicated right uh like a play is there some kind of like is that just a part of the mechanism you're saying like behind the scenes like a almost deep state concept so then right. well no so then what is his agenda right i mean what's his agenda what's what? driving chuck schumer to do what you're talking about which is where you kind of go off the reservation and you end up on this like well, weird moral place is the is there some kind of reason behind that or is that the issue in and of itself Meaning, right. here's the point, are, are, are people on the left, let's say, if we're going to make it a political thing, are they, are they just stupid? So they kind of left, end up in that weird place where Hamas and Netanyahu are like morally the same, right. right? Or is there some kind of underlying principle that's driving them to that place? And then the question becomes, what is that, right? What is driving Chuck Schumer to do something like that? Right. I yeah. mean, I think just like off the cuff, thinking about it, creating like uh, the complication and making it like very convoluted allows for you to manipulate. Because once you're creating a lot of different options and you're creating a lot of different contextualizations, right? it then allows you for you to, first of all, separate yourself from the simple man. You're right. saying that I'm in a hierarchical position, you know, like that I have, you know, all these different things going on and you only see you know, the common person in America or the common right. person somewhere else only sees one way or whatever. But you guys are not seeing the 12 other things. This is why we're in Senate. This is why who we are, because we're so smart, because we have all these things. Right. Right. right? So like, and that's a way to manipulate. A lot of times by by taking, you know, a simple subject and then going and going into someone's brain and saying, by the way, you're wrong. And here's 11 other things that I'm about it's to take, make up. It's like a gaslight. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, like a, here's a, it's gaslighting. Here's yeah. like 11 other things I'm going to make up. It's really what it is. To, yeah. It's literally like something that's straightforward, making it convincing people that it's really complicated by giving 11 different doubts in a person's mind Correct. options. So now they get confused by thinking maybe, you know, something maybe actually Israel is the bad person because I'm going to bring up 11 arguments when it's like, no, 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 let's slow down and let's just look at what actually happened and we don't need to complicate this. Right. Because there's really nothing to actually complicate based on, like, if we're just looking at what happened. Like, so if Chuck Schumer is like an animal of the Senate. Right. So, so I don't think, right. He's right. He's a politician. He's been a politician right. his entire career. He spent his whole life in the Senate. So, so part of what you're proposing, which is interesting to think about, it's an interesting theory, is that all of this is just, just like crap that Chuck yeah. Schumer's creating to perpetuate his own power. Correct. Right. He needs to keep the people that are following him at bay. Right. He's got, he's got Muslims in Michigan and he's got Jewish people in New York and he's trying to keep them both at bay. So make things super complicated, and they're like, "Oh, we got to turn this over to the smart guys in the Correct. Senate." Exactly, and they leave it alone. So that's a power play. Yeah. So you're basically 100%. saying that he, in his mind, thinks it's very simple, effectively. Yeah. One hundred percent. I think so all I don't of think them. That's, but, but there's, but I don't think that's. You think all of them operate? I that think way. almost all of them operate in this in this sense of that. Bernie they know, Sanders. You think Bernie Sanders thinks the same thing? I don't know if Bernie thinks the same thing, but I think the people on the, uh, I think the people. See, everyone thinks that Bernie Sanders is a, is like a true believer, but the guy's been in politics for way too long. He's like, he's stuck around so for so long. So the only thing long, with Bernie, right? the only thing with Bernie, believe. the only I thing with Bernie yeah. and the, uh, as opposed to other is that he doesn't have nearly as much to say on, or as far as I've seen, and I'm not, I'm no Bucky in this, but as much to say on social type of uh, like war stuff and things like that, he's more like most of his stuff that he talks about is fiscal stuff. It's like healthcare for all and um, you know, tax, you know, taxes and things like that. He his his uh platform has never been on like foreign policy on foreign policy and well, he's saying not to give Israel aid and stuff like that, hold it immediately. He's like yeah, I, but he I feel like he's not like the main face for these oh, things. Oh, he's not the main face, but the question really becomes where does this 
Like, how does the logical, what seemingly appears to be extremely logical, go out the drain? That's really the question that I'm asking, right? How right. does one plus one equal three at some point? And like, when what would seem very obvious that there are really, really bad people that need to be killed, just bottom line, you can't rationalize with jihadists who actually believe dying is the best possible scenario for them. So they'll never ever stop because dying is okay. It's right. effectively what it is. How do you deal with those people would be very rationalized is we need to kill them so that maybe perhaps what they're saying is true that dying is the best thing for them, but we're gonna make sure they die first so that they can meet whoever they wanna meet, right? right? That would be the logical conclusion when you right. have a, some people that are real monsters, right? Well, but the question yet, is they have the stomach for what it takes to root out a real monster. All right, everybody, just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this episode, CubX. CubX is an IT company that personally does my own IT. I've recommended these guys to multiple of my friends. They have come back with nothing but rave reviews. Uh, these guys have fantastic, fantastic customer service. There are no hold times. You call, you get through, they fix your problem immediately, and they are truly a group of talented IT professionals. They service specifically companies of five employees or more. They have a special division for companies with 500 employees or more and a additional division specifically dedicated to the healthcare field, which is an area that they particularly specialize in. If you'd like to get through to them, you can reach them at 732-444-8771. Press two to get through to the sales department. You can also email them at hello at cubx.com. That's hello at cubx.com. You can also check them up online at cubx.com. Again, that's cubx.com. Uh, if you're a new company that's starting out and need a great IT team, definitely reach out to these guys. Or if you're an existing company that is currently not happy with your existing IT firm, I would highly, highly recommend this group. Thank you so much, guys. Back to the episode. The people that are, let's right. say, opposing Israel, like, it's very uncomfortable. What goes on there is very uncomfortable. Like I was there, I don't know, I was there like two months ago. I was in yeah. January. Like, and we were visiting Kfaraza, which was yeah. very, very moving. Right? Not to get into like, we said we'll stay away from yeah. the stuff, but it was very moving and it was very emotional. And in the background, there's like a war going on. Yes. And there's bombs falling. And those are not hurting Israelis. Those yeah. are like, and I'm sure that they're killing terrorists, but it's also like hurting like people, actual people, right? Who like maybe, I don't know, it's, it's, it's morally complicated. So it requires a certain measure of like, um, of strength of character to be able to see things through part of the, I mean, part of the problem we have today, we, we all know this is because you have like social media and the media is very, very like they're, they're, they're a mechanism of, of trying to get audience and trying to get audience like uh, freaked and fr freaked out and glued to the TV so that they yeah. can sell ads like, like you. Right? No, I'm just, I'm just yeah. joking. Sure enough. <laughs> I just bring on eight girls. Right. <laughs> I don't kill anyone. I kill no. the shit of perspectives. <laughs> You're killing marriages. I'm joking. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm joking. By the way, on that point, you should just know, sorry yeah. to interrupt very quickly. No, no, no. There th two or three girls reached out to me and said, I'm getting so many more shidduchim because of this. I promise you. I'm not even kidding. It's amazing. Wow. It's unbelievable. Changing I was lives. like, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Insane. She's Ladies, saying you're the next God's time you're not going to have like uh, single girls lined up in front of the shadchan outside the vart so they can get married. They're just going to line up outside of Miss Label. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Solving the shit of crisis one episode at a time. Nice, <laughs> one episode at a time. I'm a man of the people. What can I say? <laughs> anyway, yeah. so like what would have the civil war look like with social media, right? Like yeah. Abraham Lincoln had to do some very, very dark things. Yeah. Right. So that's part of it, right? Part of it is like, if you have a creature of politics like Chuck Schumer, so then he wants to make things complicated, which I think is a, is a valid point, or he creates moral like ambiguities in order, because right. people have a heart, not just because he wants to keep people confused, but I think also because he, uh, I lost my train of thought, because he, he wants to keep people at bay and not upset at him. And the bottom line is, is you can't do anything real without upsetting people because they're going to be upset when you do, when you make those difficult choices, right. right? One of the, one of the strengths of someone like, like with Donald Trump's character is he doesn't tend to care. Right. And he just does what he thinks. And he kind of like puts on the strongman kind of routine and people tend to follow that for that reason. But 
people without that kind of character, people that are like slippery, right? Like a, like a Chuck Schumer type, they, they're going to have a very hard time with that. One of the questions that comes up with Chuck Schumer that I have is as a Jewish person, why does, like, why does he feel like it's okay to throw his own people under the, under the bus? And then you're like, well, you know, anti-Semitism or self-hating Jew is not the same as anti-Zionism. But like, here you have like the highest ranking Jewish senator, I mean, elected official yeah. in the United States making an effort to draw equivalency between like the prime minister of Israel and a terrorist organization for all those reasons. Right. What allows somebody like that to do that? Why? What? I guess I'm like doubling down on your question. Yeah, let's say that say, happens. A little bit my question. Let's say that happens to people that they end off on those places. Why do they do that in such a distorted way? I'll ask you a similar question. Like you see with like people that represent certain minority groups in the United States where like their mission is to support, they really care about the groups that they want to represent, but then they'll do things that are objectively like nuts, like that really hurt their constituency. Right. Right. Like, like some of what you saw in 2020 with like the, like promoting ostensibly like riots as if that's helping right. when all those riots were happening in the same, very same minority communities that you're professing to help. Right. Which like, how do you get so lost that you can't even like care for yourself that you can't even take care of your own or, or have a sense of like, like stop yourself. Yeah. Right? That's ostensibly what you're asking. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put it exactly like that. What you were saying like just a couple seconds before that, that's an additional question. I think yeah. like, how do you just like, how do you just make stupid decisions based on like, you're, you're trying to promote something and you're claiming that you want to help black people, but you're going and rioting and making all your entire constituency look like a bunch of idiots and perpetuating this stereotype that exists for arguably good reasons, right? right. Like, why would you do that? Uh, it's kind of like, there was a guy that just went on Candace Owens, by the way, some rabbi that went on Candace Owens, I mean, an absolute fool of himself between me and you, and saying there's basically furthering anti-Semitism while in an effort to claim that she's an anti-Semite. Well, the reason why he furthered anti-Semitism is because he looked like an absolute idiot accusing her and everyone else of anti-Semitism on issues that were not anti-Semitism, right? right? And had validity right. to them. So that's just, I think, a little bit of a separate question of why would people do stupid things? Just period. And why are people stupid? I'm not sure. That's a great question. <laughs> but I, I was more, the, the question for me, and, and there's what to delve in. The question is, let's just say, is that guy actually stupid? But for me, the question that, that I was asking is more just, uh, the reason why I said it could sound a little arrogant is because I'm making it seem like there's a one one way of thinking. Yes. And that's why I'm saying I understand that this sounds arrogant, but in certain areas of life, I do think that there's a simple way of thinking. And right. Trump, for example, gave that way of thinking. We have illegal people coming into our country. We cannot allow illegal people to come into our country. That should be a very straightforward one plus one equals two outcome. Right. Yet it's become the most complicated thing in the world and you'll have people making arguments from today till next year of all the illegals that are here. Trump is such a bad guy. He wants to, you know, people are starving on the border and he's not letting them into the country or whatever it is. Right. You know, we have Chuck Schumer busy, like you said, making a moral equivalence. You know, for lack of better terms, we're yeshiva guys, you know, you want to call it, you know, the thinking is crumb, right? It's just like, it's just like faulty thinking. Like, right. how does that faulty thinking come about? That's really the question to me. And for a guy like Chuck Schumer, that's exactly what that experience is, what, what's happening, right? I mean, you make the case that maybe it's just that's what humans do. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe that's like the lesson we have to draw from that. Like if you're not careful, you will overcomplicate the shit out of everything in your life. Yeah. And you'll spin yourself into a wheel into a place where you can literally do that which is opposite your own well-being. That humans have that capacity. Instead of... Meaning, instead of like assuming that there's some kind of like, uh, like intellectual or moral uh, explanation for why people do that, the answer is is like if you become so corrupted and you don't have a sense of moral direction, yeah, you will become distorted and you will twist yourself into a pretzel until you come up with ideas that are literally contrary to your own well being and your own principles. Yeah, it's like ration. It's 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 like it, you you just rationalize. 
That's what you do. So you I just realized I'm like, yeah, I'm realizing that you have a stash. Yeah, man. I started growing. <laughs> I started growing a stash. Sorry, I couldn't take you seriously. Yeah. I'm like, I started what? growing a beard purpose? stash. You didn't a beard know this? stash. A beard, a beard stash. stash. Oh my gosh. Yeah, bro. straight up. Get rid of that shit. <laughs> no, please. I'm telling you, straight up. <laughs> and with you know the costume for Purim that I have, it's gonna go completely. We're back to what's his name? To the sheriff. You know what I'm being? This is fine because it's coming out afterwards. I'm being yeah. a hot dog. Yeah, you're being a wiener. I'm being a wiener. A wiener. That's funny. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that's good. Figured. I just couldn't do anything with this label. There's a few people doing costumes with Flappish Girl in this label, like random people. Nuh-uh. I promise you, they reached out to me and asked me for like my logo and stuff. I promise. That's I'm awesome. so glad you sure realized. Cause I've been working on it for a couple of weeks. Like I just I do this as a five, no, no, no. and then I just keep I this. realized something was off, and probably I'm a dumbass <laughs> for not realizing right away that it took yeah. me like 25 minutes to. Realize. I think my coffee. He's kicking in right now. I'm like, we all like, what's happening over here? But yeah, no child molester 100%. vibes are going strong right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, no, I, you know, this is so interesting. I was just telling a friend. It's actually, you know, it's fascinating. I want to talk about, you know, one additional thing here on this topic. I was telling a friend we were working on Shabbos, and I was saying to him how I listened to this Chuck Schumer thing. And when these things happen, and I listen to them, there's a piece of me that gets like incensed. And like, right. okay, that's something I have to work on in therapy. Like, why am I getting so angry about listening to Chuck Schumer there? Yeah. Fine, great. But there's a certain ridiculousness in listening to this stuff. And a guy like Chuck Schumer, who's a career politician, right? he's never actually done shit in his life. He's never built a company. He's never actually been in the army. He's never done anything other than be in politics. Tell a guy like Bibi Netanyahu, who's a straight up confirmed genius with an IQ of over 160, people say, who graduated MIT, who graduated Harvard, who is the equivalent of a Navy SEAL in the Israeli army, okay, who comes from the lineage of real, like, risked his life, okay, and put his life on the line for his country to tell a guy like that, who turned Israel's economy, okay, from last ranking pretty much in the world and turned it into a behemoth, right? right? A tech genius... To tell a guy like that and to have almost like the chutzpah to like come in and like tell, like make the equivocation that he is like in the equivalence to Hamas or like of any honest opinion. Like he should be walking at the BB and actually asking him direction of like how we run the US. Like that that's where he ranks in my opinion. I was telling everyone like there's a certain knowledge of I think as a person, you can tell me what you think on this in general, of knowing who you are in the room and like where you stand in a room. Yeah. Like it's you walk in. I always tell someone, I I always tell people, I'm like there are people who walk into a room and they don't understand or have the self-awareness to understand who they're in the room with and they start giving advice or thinking they're in a certain place in which they are not. An example would be if I walk into the room with Aaron Young Rice and he's doing something on a deal and I start telling him you're doing it, this is the way to do it. It's like, dude, dude, shut up. This guy has made a half a billion right. dollars probably if not right. more doing this. Like, you're a nobody. And that's the way I confront when I walk into a room with people that are more experienced than me and have more right. life accomplishments at the end of the day. And I, I right. think people should. That's not to take away your entire sense of self. And we, we could discuss that and, you know, get into that. There's some sort of like lack of understanding, right? And I'm not sure if it's a lack of self-awareness, but there was just, like, that's what I was thinking when I was watching this. And I'm curious your thoughts, like if there's any validity to that, or should a guy like Chuck Schumer believe that he has the right, that he's like his own person? And like, like what, what do you think about I mean, Chuck Schumer is really good at staying in power. The guy is like, like. PB's also though. In fairness, fine. I, okay, uh, Chuck Schumer. I, I, I don't. That's. I don't know if you can equivocate the two of them in yeah. an interesting way because BB has maintained power, but he's done so without being able to retain relationships with the people that came up behind him. And he's constantly seems to be, I'm not like a huge like follower of Israeli politics, but all the people that come up behind all of his lieutenants become his, like become his adversaries. Right. Like, so he's doing something wrong, right? He's a remarkable guy. He's super smart. He's done remarkable things. And yet at this, at the same time, right. He's, he's constantly at odds with the people that are on his side. Like, if you take Likud out, like like the right in Israel, the, or the center to right in Israel, is like an overwhelming majority in the Knesset, and yet they're constantly at odds with one another. And you have to assume that that there's something Bibi's doing that's 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 flawed in that. Whereas Chuck Schumer takes this enormous like behemoth monster called Washington D.C. and the guy owns the place. You have to like 
be admired by that. In addition to that, Chuck Schumer is gaslighting the crap out of you. So you disagree yeah. with me effectively? I well, no. No, like because qualities. in actuality, you're right. I mean, in actuality, Chuck Schumer hasn't accomplished much aside from that. He's really good at politics, right? He's really good at politics, but has that manifested into something concrete? Not really. He's a, He's been able to maneuver himself constantly, whether the Democratic Party is in a position of power or not, or not in a position of power, to constantly put himself at the center stage and also maintain all these relationships. He's like... like Anyone who, anyone, I mean, all these pundits that talk about politics, like really, really look up to Mitch McConnell, right? But in, in some ways, Chuck Schumer's like made Mitch McConnell his bitch, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, for, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a really funny thing. That's he's really like the ultimate diplomat in a certain way. Like, he's but, however, to, right here he is. He gave this speech and he gave a lot of thought to it. Yeah, and he made a calculated opinion that he could gaslight, label. And pander to whatever Michigan, and he was going to get away with it, and we would and, be talking about him, right? And bad bad press is good press, uh, whatever. And he's not wrong. Mac and it, well, he's he. The question is like like where's his, where are his ethics, and is he somebody that we should right. continue to be supporting, and 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 do we continue to like, do we as a people, let's say, continue to like, just like allow him to do that without like really saying something to him or forcing him to pay the political consequences that he deserves to pay, let's say here in New York, right? This is his base. Like he relies on New York. Like, do you think, you think he's a self-hating Jew? I, I happen not to just declare, I don't think he is. I just think he cares about himself. I don't I think, think he's, he's a self-complicated Jew. Oh, well, that's fair. A lot of people are that. Right. I think he's, he ha he struggles with his own Jewish identity. He, I think he clearly does. He doesn't know what to do with his Jewish identity. Like a lot of secular Jews, they don't know what to do with their Jewish identity and where Israel comes into play. And when Israel is not like a politically convenient like mechanism, they struggle with it because on the one hand, they want to support their brothers, but on the other hand, Zionism has never been a really popular thing. I mean, you know, I've said publicly, I think the whole Zion Zionism itself is a farce. It doesn't exist, actually. It's just the whole thing is. Can you explain on that? Wait, what? The whole thing is a is a is a is a uh, is a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Front. It's it's a front. It's not real. It's it's perpetuated by two two sides in order to create a reality where people are arguing on Zionism. In in fact, Zionism was a political movement at the beginning of the 20th century right, yes. to establish a state of Israel. And guess what? The Zionist won. There's a state of Israel. There's no such thing as a Zionist anymore. You're either you're either support the Jewish state of the democratic Jewish state of Israel or you don't. But what we do is we kind of use this like euphemism called Zionism, right? And that's convenient for a variety of reasons, right. both for people that are anti Jews and anti Semitic, but also people on the, the right side of within the Jewish community. We use this word Zionism and stuff like I'm anti Zionist or not anti Zionist. What does that mean? You're anti Zionist. There's a Jewish state. I went there. It's there. There's a government. There's a democratic state. There's people right. that live there. They have a system of government. They have a whole life and a culture. You can't get rid of them. So, so like the thing that allows, I don't want to get off topic, but like the, the thing, this is like something that like this drives me, it, it just drives me nuts. A college student gets up in the middle of New York City and says something like, from from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And everyone's like, oh, it's anti-Semitic because they're trying to get rid of all the Jews. But the thing that allows them to say something like that is because other people say, well, I'm a Zionist. Because if you're, if, if you're a Zionist, then I can be anti-Zionist. But that war ended a long time ago. It ended in 1948. It's over. At least in 1952, like well, it's over it now. They could say it, and that just means I want to get rid of Israel. That doesn't mean no. It, it you you're saying that it only exists. You can't get line. rid of Israel. Uh, I it's, hear it. Well, they're 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 pushing for that. That's what they're lying. You can't. They, what they're doing is they're saying that I don't want to kill the Jews in Israel. I just want to get rid of Israel because that's a debatable thing. By me saying I'm pro-Zionism, right. I'm saying that it's something that's up for debate. Right. But in fact, no it's not something up for debate. Right? right, it's 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 just it's just here. Right, it just is. Saying. So like now it's not up for debate. So someone like Chuck Schumer, getting back to that, is Chuck, Chuck Schumer, a self-hating Jew, like many Jews, right? They don't know what to do with that because because. 
because I think what you're saying is has a lot of merit. They don't make it very simple. The, 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 the line of logic, I think, that I'm putting across is very simple, right? The Jewish people have a democratic state in the ancient land of Israel. You either support them or you don't support them. Killing them is not an option, just like killing any people is not an option within like a civilized society. It's not an option. It, there's nothing to talk about. But when you create these kind of like complicated realities... It allows, yeah, when you create complicated realities, it allows for complicated answers. And complicated answers a lot of times have, you know, consequences to them that are like, oh, is that okay? Was that not okay? And it creates a moral ambiguity of all of Well, it also, of, he's saying it, it brings out ultimately at the end of the day the a, a conversation that's really a stupid conversation that doesn't need to be had. Like, there's no, not, you're really talking about nothing. Yeah, it brings, it brings, it brings about, right. uh, yeah, <laughs> it brings about opportunities to talk about and create dialogue that has it's irrelevant. Th that's irrelevant yeah. and irrelevant. then ultimately you have bad actors that will use that in very very bad ways you know on this topic it's funny i was telling someone uh i was having a conversation with someone and i was saying if you think about it uh trump at the end of the day and there's, I, there's so much to talk about on trump because it, it's kind of like if you say anything that's pro-trump you're automatically like a bad guy you have to be right. like scared of saying right. that trump does things right by the way right. it's like people <laughs> think for some reason because of my personality i've been trying to figure out exactly why yeah. that if i say i'm pro-trump then i'm that that i'm you know i like certain things trump does then i am trump and i am the biggest pro-trump guy in the entire world right i can't figure out exactly why they think that yeah i can't okay. imagine why <laughs> can't imagine yeah <laughs> but no in all seriousness i was telling them i'm like if you think about Donald Trump, the reason why he won, yeah. okay, to dumb it down, yeah. it's because every single, he has not come up with, outside of his, uh, uh, the way he handled Israel and the Palestinians, there has not been one profound idea that he ever brought to the table. The entire thing is basic common sense. It's being a fifth grader looking at a situation, okay, because honestly, in a lot of ways, that is the way he looks at situations, and being like, right. bad guy, good guy, get rid of bad guy. Wall, we can't have people come in, get away from us. We need women. Let's just do this. This way, they have the shot for you know for fear of this fear. Of... Everything is the most simple thing in the world, right? right. He, he had a whole thing about cutting regulation. Like we, we can't have this. We need to get our infrastructure built in America. Like enough of this bullshit. We can't be having like eight years to figure out how to build an overpass. Cut it down to one year, right? Very simple things that if we were all sitting in a room right here, we would all come up with the exact same outcome. If we were trying to build a building right next to like, well, how do we do this most effectively? Yeah. Yeah. So. And it's funny because he just came out literally and they asked him, they asked him like, are you a Republican or a conservative? Like, are you a conservative? Because exactly what he is is still like unclear almost at this point. Right. And he's like, I'm not a, a conservative or a liberal. Liber uh, I'm not a conservative or a liberal. I'm a person of common sense, right? Which is basically what I was telling this person. It's like, right. nothing's really, and I think it speaks to this point very much. It's like the idea that, I think the country actually really is looking for that. Someone was just like, stop making things complicated. Here's common sense. And he managed, because we have so many idiots, I actually think, in government, he actually managed to win because 60% of the world is listening to this and like of America is listening to this and they're like, thank God, someone's just making this simple for us. Well, right. I view yeah. it differently than you. I don't think they're idiots. I think I know. I think they know exactly what they're doing. They're very smart. There's a reason why a guy like Chuck Schumer was right. been okay, able so. to stay into office for so much and been able to manipulate the system so much. They right. create these complications to make a barrier between, like I was saying before, between the, the higher ups and the peasant people. And they make the peasant people hear, yeah. feel a certain way about themselves that they have to listen to this moral, this moral, spiritual, you know, every type of authority. And all of a sudden, you know, government, which is supposed to be just, you know, to protect you in a certain way and has, you know, whatever, all the stuff, the Constitution, different things like it has now become like this some sort of like uh, complete, I don't know, or, organization of 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 this organization where now you have to listen to us because we know everything more than you. Yeah. And everything that we say is some, uh, some, uh, in some it's way. It's a little bit like this in Judaism. Right. In some way. What's, has, what's that? It's a little bit like this in the firm world. Right. Why? What do you mean? It's in what way? Thorabonim. Like, it's like the Das Torah concept. It's, right, <laughs> but it's, like, it's like somehow we know so much more about the world and we know so much more about things than you know. And right. it's like if we and if we create more and more ideas that you've never thought about in your brain, you'll be like, oh, my God, they're so smart because yeah. they have all these ideas that I've never thought about in my specific you know, case because I'm just sitting here farming or I'm just sitting here, you know, working on a plant or I'm sitting here every day putting food on the table. And this person has 58 ideas going on in their brain and now they're going to tell it to you at the State of the Union or here, there or the other. And now it's like, OK, I might as well, you know, give up all my 
you know, opinion and authority of my own self to those people. Except that Trump was able to last in Washington, D.C. for three years, and Chuck Schumer's lasted in Washington, D.C. for 40 years. Right, because he's... So, I mean, I, that, I, I wouldn't of, say that's fully true. For all of that I pragmatism... Fully, I wouldn't say that's fully true. Yeah, why? Trump is there for more than three years. He's been there for... He owns the Republican Party. You're what saying you now... No, he has owned the Republican Party. I understand, but he, he he's he's nine years about to get elected okay, again. I, I hear what you're saying. You're making a good argument. So I don't You're making a good argument at the same time, like he's he's not been able to and you could either I mean, someone could make the case that that's the left's fault, but he's not been able to make any overtures in order to get things practically yeah. done in a complicated system. So I agree with you. So what you're saying is I admire Trump because he brings pragmatic common sense solutions and perspectives to problems that people care about. Right, but right? the other aspect right. is problematic. The other issue that he has The other is, challenge, but some of it has to do with his personality. Yeah. It's just like he's, and he, and he doesn't control himself, right? Right. That is That does play against him, right? But he can't be somebody that he's not, right? right. And he's very much himself, right? <laughs> so, so, so it's a very, it, it kind of creates a really interesting, um, like, paradigm and question it's 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 interesting to watch society at this moment in reality where people don't know if trump is like to love him or to hate him no and people really don't, people don't know if they're allowed to say that they love him and they also don't know if they're allowed to say that they really like are troubled by some of the things he does and says or the way that he carries himself or the way that he sometimes like even the people that are like for Trump, right? I remember, I'll tell you this way. Like I, when Trump ran the first time in 2016, I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> like this guy's, it's, like, it's crazy. Like Donald Trump, he's, first of all, he's a Democrat, right? So he's gonna like run as a Republican. That's nuts, right? But like, he's not qualified and I was not a fan at all. I'm not a fan at all. Over time, I, I really started to like see the, the value that he brought and what he was bringing to the table and the way that he energized his base. And that was really wonderful. And Hillary Clinton was objectively terrifying and a shrewd, terrible person, Bitch. right? So so it's like super happy, right? Trump won, but very scared. That was the only reason, and pretty much, there was so, that had to have been 75% of why I was going for Trump. I hated Hillary Clinton. It's I think that's 75% of the reason why most people- It's funny to say narcissism with Trump, but like, right. there was this, it was covert narcissism. It was yeah. so manipulatively deep with a person like Hillary that I was like, anything for this person, Hitler could get a I, like, I get this person, away. you know what I'm saying? It was just I like, feel like there's two types of narcissists. I don't, it's, it's hard to like, like position people together, but I, I think from our past conversations, I think you like this. There's like narcissists that have kindness and good and goodwill, and the narcissists that are like just self centered, and like everything that they do is utterly about them and their own perpetuation, and they're ma manipulating you. And Trump is the first, and Hillary Clinton is the second. Well, right? who's the when you say have kindness? Could you explain that? Like Trump is a very benevolent guy. He's a very like he, right. he, he seems will, like a very kind person. But he's also only focused on himself. He's very preoccupied with himself and he's very preoccupied with his own insecurities. And he definitely has like, he, I don't know him. So like, he seems to have some real, obviously, right. He seems to have some real like narcissistic tendencies, but he also has this like tremendous graciousness. I actually met him once yeah. right? years ago. I think I told you this, right. And he was so gracious. I got a wedding. I was at a wedding at Trump, like one of his Marla, like, my, first of all okay two things i'll tell you about trump did i tell you this already? Well, so okay so this is funny so we went to this wedding i was like it was someone i was very very close to like momish like lived in my house right when he was single and then he got married and so i was like like part of the family so we were there for pictures and we're at this this golf course not mar like it was here in new york and uh and we go so like the, the couple are taking pictures and but so we're like i'm like hanging out with like the bride's father and his brother and like me and my son and we don't know where to go. We're like staying around, so we go into the clubhouse, right? And Trump's there. He like comes and sits down next to us. He really? just starts like watching the football game and like like just shooting the shit with us. He's one of the boys. He was really funny, right? <laughs> oh, you're making a wedding. It's so nice. Wedding. I love weddings. He was like super nice. The 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 other um, people at the the club had us removed because we weren't club members. 
They had us removed from the from the room. And Trump, it's funny because it's his it's his club. He turns and says, Yeah, these people are snobs. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that that happened to you. He's very kind. Yeah. He was very gracious about it. Anyway, he ends up leaving with us. And then he like says, like, oh, no, I want to meet the, the couple. And he like and he went out and he like took pictures with the couple and he spent time with them. Right. Very gracious, very sweet. And really because of what had happened because the snobby rich people in the club had kicked us out because we were, I don't know, maybe because we were Jews. Maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> right? So <laughs> That's a whole topic onto itself. Right? So yeah, like so that go. really shifted my perspective because here you have this guy who's like, uh, like, okay, Trump. And yet you have this part of him that's very, very like kind and gracious and, you know. Right. Like, what do you do with something like that? And I feel like that's part of what people have such a hard time with him. Do you love Trump? Do you hate him? Well, I don't know. It depends which one shows up on any given day. Because right. sometimes you love him. Like sometimes he just says things so clear and direct. And sometimes he's courageous and he stands up in the face of like evil. And you just want to be like, yeah, this guy, he's awesome. And then sometimes you're just like. Do something that's like. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, come on. Like remember we were, we were on the Laura Trump pod and I literally yeah. asked her straight to her face. I yeah. said. And like your father-in-law, I'm like, is there any time where you just come home and you just go like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, 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 dude, like, like, and she's like, yeah, there's a few tweets that have gone out where I'm just like, are you sure? Like, like why? Like, why? Like what? Right. And yeah. Yeah. I, I hear that. And it's confusing. So it's he's like, a troubling figure, but at the same time, like, like maybe he needs to take a lesson from Chuck Schumer as much as we like. Right. Love to hate Chuck Schumer for being a shrewd a -hole, yeah. right? Like maybe he maybe he needs to like learn. Maybe he needs to adapt more. Maybe he'll figure that out if he wins the presidency. I don't know. I just hate career politicians. I just, I can't stand them. I happen to think, I think, I like. I, I mean, maybe not, just not a surprise. I like BB a lot. Like I'm not saying, I, and I don't know that much. I think, I don't know that much about Israeli politics and I'm not saying I know all of BB's like, like he clearly obviously sees himself as like the Shlomo Melch. Like that, that much is clear, right? And he wants the power and all that stuff. Right. I think anyone that puts them, this is a specific take of mine, anyone that puts themselves in position to be a president of any country and has the hubris to think that they can run millions and millions of people, you know, unless like right. you have a boss call coming down, right. you know, in itself, you know, is full of themselves to a level of like, you know. You know what is interesting? I have like a preoccupation with Abraham Lincoln and I've read a lot of what he wrote Right. And what compelled him to want to become president? Because he's like an objectively humble person who is like very gracious and very like unassuming. And he like he took insults really well. And he he and yet he had this enormous desire and passion to succeed and to lead and a sense that he was supposed to do something important with his life and an awareness that he was smarter than every anyone else he ever spoke to. It's a funny thing. Like there is a part of that that's like meaning you're right. And then there's also a part of it that people that ascend to leadership have a sense that they have a calling. And, it's like they're tough kids. And I think that right. part of it comes down to like, do they get lost right. in the ego of self and the worship of self? Right. And let's say we want to bring this away from the politics. Like I think all of us have that. We have that in our families. We have that in our careers, right? Like do we get lost in the politics of our own like identity, right? right. Or do we like follow our convictions? I think this is something I think about a lot. Something I really think about a lot. Like, because like when you're growing up in yeshiva, it's like you're not allowed to have an ego because ego's bad. So then like you're not allowed to have ambition because right. ambition's bad. And if you if you live in that reality, then the only people that are ambitious are the assholes, right? So they're the only people right. that are in positions of power. So that that obviously is not right. That not you can't outcome. do that. Right. Right. You can't live that way. You can't create a society without ambition where you, every ambition is some kind of like narcissistic tendency or egotistical preoccupation right there has to be a drive to do more and it i don't think it could just be like this magnanimous like like i don't know yeah i oversimplified it but i think overall in today's society yes for sh I, I agree with you there are there are, i think it's few and far between where it's like your and i guess the hebrew word tafket in life is to be that person right where you really feel like you need to be moshe rabbeinu right or like and but to me, though, that place comes from a sense of real introspection and humility and, and like understanding that this is what I'm here for, because this is what, you know, God wants me here for rather. And the way they operate because of that comes from a place that feels very genuine to the public and to the people that they're leading. Whereas when you become presidents of any of these countries or whatever it is in today's society, 
it's a power thing where then you're it's more leading with fear rather than leading with anything else in order to create a following. Well, so not with, necessarily fear. It could be what he's saying is that it's more focused on the ego specifically. Right, focusing on the ego, which then, and part of focusing on the ego, I think part of what, like, again, narcissistic tendencies is that you're not, you're not, you don't allow people to choose for themselves and say that you want, they want to gravitate towards you because this is, you know, this is your calling. It's a, a force upon other people to follow you with, you know, manipulative tactics and tactics of fear and tactics of that that allow you to stay in those positions of power and get to those positions of power. So, Label, let me ask you this question. Do you think that Trump is like the first thing that 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 Sam described or the second? Is he the is he the person that's driven by a sense of his own calling to lead the country or is he just accumulating power? Um, I think that he's just accumulating power. I, but I think at the same time, I think that he, uh, someone with his co-host has the ability to, if they work on themselves, to harness the other aspect of themselves, if they worked on themselves, to use the co-host that someone like, like he has the co clearly. He's 75, he's not doing it. So That's the not, not the is, point, he's asking me a question. I'm right. answering the question of right. what I think. Yeah. I think Trump wants to help America, but I think at the end of the day, like, I think he loves the concept of America. I really, really do. But I think at the end of the day, he wants to be the one to do it. And that's what he's focused on is I, Donald Trump, am going to be the greatest. And I actually also like America. So I'm the one who's chosen to do this. Now, that is driven by ego and power. And right. he's the one who wants to do it. I'm just saying that he happens to have a crazy koach to lead and create a movement. Like, that's right, his but, superpower. Okay, but all the people that you've met within his movement, because you've met some people and you've spoken to some people, have you met anybody... I wonder. This is a real question. I'm not. There's no. This is not a lead-in. Have you met anybody that qualifies for that first one? Is there anyone within the movement of Trump, MAGA, that you've encountered that you feel like this person is just like they're just doing it lishma to some degree? Obviously, there's not. No one's really yeah, ultimately right. lishma. But is there anyone who's not really driven by this drive for for like ultimately for power? You don't have to say who. I'm not asking you who. I'm just saying. Probably not. No. No, you don't it's think extremely, so. Extremely, right. it's rare. The, the Ronald Reagans of the world, the people that have the wisdom, like, right. not very, very. Do you think wisdom. Ronald Reagan? Is that your sense that Ronald Reagan was that person? I, I don't. I mean, know I know 100%. that people talk about it that well, way. Well, that's my point. But that's right. my point. I don't know whether he was or he, or he wasn't. But when you say Ronald Reagan, people see a human who was a true leader in the way a leader should be. Right. That's the point. He was able to lead. He had the wisdom, and he had. You know the ability for the movement. When he won forty nine of fifty states, it's, like that idea. Well, it's also to me what I was talking about is like it's there. I believe, and this is like an inherent thing I believe, and it goes back to children and kids and different things like babies. All humans have an intuition of who's being genuine, who's not being genuine. Like someone, like uh, obviously people that have co, like you know, have their one hundred percent cohorts that are with them. Like they have. People know when you walk into a synagogue, you walk into a church, you walk into a, people gravitate towards certain people. People know when some people are full of bullshit. I believe it a hundred percent. Um, some people can fool people and some people can fool people on a high level and learn to fool people on a high, high level. Yes, and that's course. where narcissism comes into play. And so to me, Reagan, when people talk about it, it's more that when other people are, and I think we talked about this on a pod year, uh, months ago with Zach is like when people are, it's like, does a community choose a leader or does a leader choose himself? Right. It's a slapper scroll. And, oh, and, 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 and there's, and there's a level of where a leader has to ask himself, why me? And when that leader asks himself, why me? And they brings really brings humility and humbleness to it. And then he comes to the conclusion of why me from a place of usually spirituality, which if you look like in the, you know, times of like the Bible and different things, like a, a lot of leaders asked why me at the time. You know, like, and I, you can tell me if I'm wrong, I'm not great with Torah and stuff, but like, even like Moshe Rabbein used to ask Hashem all the time, like, be like, why am I the one that's like needs to lead into Israel? Why am I the one that, you know, I'm coming up for the Luchos, like different things. Like, there's a sense of humbleness and humility as a leader of why me, that even if it is your, it is your place, like those people that know it's their place. It's not being led by ego. Effectively. Yeah, it's it, and it's not led by ego, and and they try to do the best in their power in a certain way to combat it to make sure that they're right, they're they're doing the right thing. What's interesting about the narrative of Torah? I, this is something I've thought about a lot because part of the narrative of like the Torah, particularly like like Shmos, is that that Moshe 
Moses is like avoiding the mantle of leadership. Right. And ostensibly, as the commentaries explain, he really wants to hand it over to, to Aaron, to his yeah. older brother, right. who is in Egypt leading the way, right? So then it seems to tell you that true leadership requires this kind of like not well, wanting to take it. Well, on a Megadam. However, however, earlier in the story, there's a part that is not necessarily focused on where Moshe Rabbeinu is raised in the palace of Paro. Right. Right. And he leaves the palace to look at his to look at his brethren, meaning the implication, I think, is that he's leaving to go look at their well being and to lead them, to be a leader. Look, look, look at me. I'm in a position of power. I've been called to destiny. Right? right. And 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 part of the way that you know that is because he yells at Dustin and Aviram, right? Because of his sense of his own importance. Right, he says, Dustin, everyone, what are you doing? You can't hit each other, and doesn't even turn around and be like, who, who the heck are you? Right. right, right. Why? Who are you to tell us? You're like living in the right. in posh luxury, luxury, and like you're telling us. And he ends up having to run away, right? Which is like an interesting thing, as if the narrative is trying to to express this idea that part of leadership is somewhere in between, like the two things yes. we're talking about. Like yeah. on the one hand, there has to be a certain ego, Correct. right. And on the other hand, there has to be a certain humility. I think what's interesting with Trump, just to give you an opinion, I asked you about yours, I was curious about yours. I think Trump wants to be that person, but I think his instincts get in the way. Right, he can't. I think that's what people like about Trump. Oh, he says all the time, I want to be able to, he tries to like, but he just doesn't have He wishes sweet, he, he had that character. Bonus. He's also just honed it for 40 years. He didn't go to therapy <laughs> when he was 33 years old. I'm sorry he didn't. Like, if he would have gone to therapy from 33 it's to 40, he to go to therapy. There's also, honestly, a lot of this, it's not just going to therapy. There, there's a certain. You know what I'm saying, like, there's a certain depth and understanding of people, I think, and cerebralness around life in general, with an understanding of of a healthy sense of ego and the koach that you have. It, it's it's a picture, in my opinion. It's not one thing or the other. Like, you know. So I, I, I think that you need like I, I said this on the Vivek pod. I literally said to him. I said I don't think it's a we need the country so divided. This we need someone who can unify. This is not a policy based thing. This takes in, intangibles and a wisdom to lead. And he said to me, he's like, that's actually an extremely profound statement. He says it. I think, and I joked around about that afterwards, whatever, because he was saying earlier, like, you know, don't be humble. Own your attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but like seriously, like it is. It's intangible. Like right. like real leadership that's not just like driven straight to narcissism and ego is an intangible thing, I think. Right. Because you can't have someone who's too humble that thinks that doesn't want to take the mantle either. Right. Right. It's like this give and pull. That's what he needs. It's really complicated. It's really, really complicated. complicated. And, yeah. Then, yeah. and I think also the third part of it, is, and this is just straight in America, is that to rise to leadership, it's impossible to do it from a place of, it's almost impossible to do it out of a place of humility and humbleness. And why a guy like Trump had to break the mold and being a narcissist in a certain way is the only way to break the mold. It's because you're dealing with narcissists. You're dealing you with- You have to play a very dirty you're game. Play, you're playing- the, There, the, in Washington. Yes, in yeah, Washington. The game is that, dirty. Yeah. Washington is dirty, right? So the whole- the, If you play by the real rules- You play by the rules. If you yeah. play by the rules of, 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 of morals and yeah. you play by the rules, of, you're getting nowhere. Yeah. So you have to have a guy like Trump that is going to narcissistically or with narcissistic tendencies- Break, you know, it's break very hard down to find thing. the guy that understands what they're doing. Lishma, right. like, you know, for, for Lishma, that's it's not, not like, bad, some narcissist, but plays a narcissist and it doesn't become him. That's like the end of the day, right. the way so I if see you operate a certain way at the end of the day for, for, you know, for three years straight to get to the presidency or four right. years, you become that person. It's like the way that I see it in America, just and for Trump, is and to me, and justify the means in this in this specific case, right? That would be the that's question. where that's where that's where the question comes it's into play. It's, like it's, it's a dangerous space. Like, do the ends justify the means? Well, the 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 I think the interesting out, takeaway from all that is labeled "Don't get so dysregulated" by by Chuck Schumer. He's just a, he's just a just a part of this part of that right. insanity. Like that is the mechanism that is right. democracy. It's the democracy. that drives me mad. Yeah, that, it's the shaker. It's, it's, it's the deep the line. system inherently. But it, I was thinking about this when I was listening. I was listening to the Vivek, uh, like the, the the Vivek interview. I was thinking about this. He was talking about like he was talking about the the sense that the founding fathers had that, like, and there's a quote from Jefferson that I'm I'm very bad at remembering quotes where he talks about like how, like the the need for the the Second Amendment people talk about this a lot. The need for the populace to be armed because it's, there there might be a need for actual, right. uh, you know, rebellion, right. Right? right? To set the the power center straight, right? right. So part of the way that they crafted 
the the system of government in the United States is to create most of the time a quagmire, right? Because they separated powers and there's all these different mechanisms of power that are at odds with one another, which means it's going to create toxicity. It's inherently right. built to create toxicity. And the problem is, is that all those mechanisms of government, all those separated powers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more complicated as the country grows and as we grow the bureaucracy. So then the toxicity gets more and more and more. Yeah. And meanwhile, we just want to like not pay too much taxes and like, like right. and and just like live and leave us alone. Do you know right? that until That's 1913, the you know yeah. that 1913 there was no such thing as no such thing as taxes. Income tax. Yeah. No, no, there was no taxes. Zero dollars of taxes. Yeah. Till nineteen thirteen. So that means for more of the time this country was around than wasn't, there was zero taxes. FDR was really the one who really pushed taxes heavy. That's when the world America. So how changed. did the how did the federal government? I'm just telling you facts. Go look it up. I'm telling Didn't you. Didn't he create an amendment? The, the, wasn't that the whole thing? Cool. The, the income tax is a whole thing. That, that's what I'm, I thought you were talking about. I'm 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 not familiar. I'm, I'm just saying till 1913 there was zero taxes. Okay. Definitely, most definitely income. I'm saying like we we've moved so far off like what America was founded on as it is. Just for the record, like meaning it, in my opinion. So people say things like that. We've moved far off of what America was, but America was created as. A, a laboratory, right, to try to see if the people themselves could be the sovereign and they could rule themselves, so to speak. Right. And not just that the people would rule themselves, because it's not what America is. It's not an it's not a it's not an absolute democracy. It's a republic, right? So we're not we not we're not ruled by the people, but the people are the sovereign. They are the right. the rulership. The the end of that laboratory is where we are. At any given moment in American history, we are the end of the experiment. <laughs> right so like the end yeah. of the experiment is if you put the people in charge if you make them the sovereign this is what's going to happen the government's going to get bigger and bigger and the people are going to be want to be on the dole and then at some point it's going to come to a head and then there's going to be a rebellion right now part of the question is, is the rebellion going to be violent hopefully not it doesn't seem so far like it's been meaning if you look at like what ronald reagan did that was a rebellion it was just not violent right ronald reagan turned the country over right it, yeah. completely Utterly, the same country, right? That 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 elected uh, what's his name? Um, uh, who was the president before Reagan? Um, Carter. Carter, right? The same country that elected Carter, right? Which is hilarious, right? Elected elected Reagan like the next term, right? But then they elected Reagan. Forty nine. 49 states erected Reagan. How does that happen in 10 years? Yeah. Eight years. It doesn't, it's, it's yeah. baffles the mind how crazy. you can have an utter turnover of a society. Right. It's, it's violent. It's crazy. So like part of what I try to remember when I'm like standing and yelling at the television, right. Yeah. Is like, this is all just the crazy experiment that they created. And if I get dysregulated by it, like I'm just like, I've lost the point. Yeah. They're supposed to be doing that right. stuff. I hear that. That's an interesting takeaway. I like. I, I don't do it perfectly because I definitely <laughs> stand at the television and yell at it all the time, and I can get Amazing. all whacked out, right? <laughs> but I do have to remind myself, like that's the the way the system is created. It's created to create that toxicity, and if you don't like it, the only alternative is a king. That's the alternative is actually a monarch. Not to get yeah. Um, the last point I'll say on this particular issue is yeah. that this is going to sound very yeshivish, but I'm going to tap into my yeshivish side of me. Yeah. You. Warren, shut up. <laughs> no, but um, the reason why I, I, I think true leaders, it's impossible to contain the ego without Torah. I believe that 100%. Without like a consistent focus, Torah, Torah Musr, it's not possible. Like, spiritual it, principles. Yeah, Spirit, heavy yeah. spiritual. Like it's just not possible. Yeah. If you are here for 80 years and you're just focused on yourself and you're not honing your skills every single day, right. you have no shot. Like, Moral clarity, spiritual principles. Zero. Yeah, how, how are you yeah, going to do it? Right. Who should be expected to do it? Right. No one. Right. Like it would be right. ridiculous almost. Right. So I just, I, I don't think anyone running for president or, you know, is, is busy doing that for the most part. So, you know, uh, that, right. th that would be my. Well, hopefully not. What Ho do you mean? Hopefully we merit a leader that's worth it. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm just saying, other. I don't think anyone right now. All right, everybody, want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Ice Shaker Incorporated. For those of you that have been following Mislabeled, you know that we have Chris Gronkowski on. Uh, this is his company. They were on Shark Tank, offered a deal by all five sharks. They have sold over 1 million bottles to date. Kitchen grade stainless steel, which does not absorb odor like all plastic bottles do. If you are a workout junkie, 
this product is for you. Third party tested, will hold ice for 30 plus hours and keep, keep your drink cold. Additionally, this is customizable for all employers for their employees and can make for a great gift for a friend. Turnaround time on custom bottles is three to five business days. To reach out to them, you can hit them via email, info at iceshaker.com. That's I-N-F-O at I-C-E-S-H-A-K-E-R.com. Or reach them by phone, 817-329-6478. Again, that's 817 817- 329-6478. A customer rep will direct you to the correct sales department. Now back to our episode. Has to be, I wonder you'd get your take is that someone that I thought was in the middle and obviously, and you'll see the headway that he made with people is, yes, it was big. You know, he got to the stage that he got to and I'll tell you it is in a second, but he ultimately, he didn't fail, but he ultimately, you know, what do you got? 4% like Vivek. Oh, Vivek. It's, like, it's like, it's like he... He had the he has the moral kind of spiritual you know thing that he you could see from the pod and also from how he operates that he operates from a sense of you know he knows how smart he is he knows he, he knows everything he's, he he knows yeah. how he know he oh knows his, he knows his he knows it is his most strengths of the leaders. on a high level but he's very grounded and rooted in his Hinduism and in different things and like but you see how far that got you the the. What I was oh, impressed yeah. with Vivek is that he he. T- I'm sorry, I don't mean to. Yeah, I, go I shouldn't have interrupted you, but but what one of the things I was impressed with Vivek from the from that interview, um, and also from uh, the way that he performed in the in the um, debates. Right, sorry, it's nighttime. My brain's not working so clearly. The the he seems to operate from a certain sense of his own principles. I don't want to say moral cl- clarity, but he clearly. And part of what happens is, is a lot of more recent Republican politicians that are coming from a a religious bearing, a spiritual bearing, they're like pretentious. And one of the things I notice about Vivek is that he's not pretentious. Right. Right. It's very interesting. Most of them are pretentious. Even the ones that I've been attracted to and I like, at the end of the day, I walk away and be like, "Ah, they're a little pretentious. And it, it, it bugs me because then it, it tells me that the the spiritual principles are not really so spiritual. They're just like these, right. it's it's not- Talking points. It's not real. There's something li- missing there. And then yeah. maybe that's even worse. Cause like at least Trump, right? You know- He, you know, he is what he is. You yeah. know what he is what he is. When somebody's like hiding behind a veil of pretentious righteousness, right? it's like, uh, I don't I don't know. That's I think it also goes back to the point that I was saying before, like human beings, we have this insight into like who's being genuine and who's not. And I think that yeah. when, like Vivek, Vivek, whatever you, yeah, right? yeah. there's a genuinity about him that is undeniable that what he's doing what he's saying what he's trying to accomplish comes from a very 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 grounded place you it's know, not necessarily yeah. just coming from a place and i'm not and i'm not saying he doesn't have ego you know to in order to build a company that he's built in order to you know go after what he's going after and you know to, to you know have the lofty goals obviously you know and that's and, and by the way another thing in, in this conversation it's normal. Humans have ego. Like humans have aspirations and humans like and like you said, like one way to combat it is to always, you know, kind of check yourself. And one way to check yeah. yourself, you would say, right? And a lot of people would say, especially Orthodox Jews with the Torah and things of that nature. And in, you know, and other religions have other ways of checking themselves, yeah. right? And Vic has the Hinduism and different things of checking themselves. And and that's really what it comes down to is like these leaders It's like checking yourself versus having the ego and being yeah. able to combine those two is like, yeah, it's also like, how much are we asking of people already? Like, you know, at the end of the day, they're leading, they're trying to lead, they're, 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 they're trying to run a campaign to lead 300 million people, but you want them to balance, you know, all these little well, things. That's why you have one person who does it. It's, that's it's, gotta it's be, the uh, craziest thing. Uh, I, I hear, but that's, to ask that's someone the, to do something of that nature when they're not, you a know, a leader should be a special person. Right. right. That's again, I agree that the the president of the United States is not the typical leader that right. we are accustomed to growing up. Right. Let's just say in Judaism, which doesn't have to do with there's no such thing as a d- democratic leader in Judaism. Correct. Like the people don't vote on who the leader is. Like that's not how it ever went. Like Moshe Rabbeinu was appointed by Hashem. Done. He's the leader. He was the person. Uh, Democracy is an American based concept. Now it's. The best by far for well Greek, but well, uh, it's a little it, older than America, but is it Greek, yeah. all Greek. But I'm yeah. just saying, like, <laughs> right, right, no, I understand what you're concept. saying. No. Um, yeah, no, Vivek, it's a good, interesting point. Uh, he's very, very smart. I mean, it's so funny because I'll tell you the most interesting thing. I think so much of what 
people make decisions regarding other people are just based so much on if they like the person or not. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make a difference. And, and I, the way I, I'm able to tell you that is because going into the Vivek pod, I had heard that he doesn't like Israel, blah, blah, blah. And he, does, he says, cut off aid to Israel. And I was sitting there, I didn't know anything. I listened to that a little bit and I'd heard this and I, you know, right. I just heard, I was hearing a lot of chirping. Sit down and I asked him his opinion. He gave the smartest opinion I have heard to date yeah. on Israel. Literally the smartest. He's like, why would we give his money to Israel and then have to control them about what they do with our money? Let's give them the full rights to do whatever they have to do to get rid of Hamas. Full diplomatic, you know, full diplomatic, he calls it diplomatic r and We're going to go give them money. He's like, they don't need money. He's like, at the end of the day, yeah, they'll take money if we offer it to them. But Israel doesn't need our money. And it doesn't even make sense for us to go and give it to them because then it's a it's a lever for us to go and control them. It's like that would be the stupidest thing in the world. And like I hear I'm hearing him, I'm like, which motherfuckers are busy telling me that this guy's anti-Israel? Listen to what he's saying. It actually makes total sense. And it's the same thing with like like Trump and whatever, all these like Trump will sit there saying illegal immigrants should not allow into our country. I mean, there's tape after tape of Obama saying it, Biden saying it, and no one hates them when they say it, but Trump says it, and it's like almost like you would think that someone like Trump is saying something absolutely outrageous, like we should kill all the illegal immigrants or something like this so morally unconscionable, you know, when what he's saying is 100% true, but I don't think anyone even cares of what he's saying is true. I mean, but you do have to, you do have to take accountability for the fact that like when Trump says that people on the left hear the second thing that you heard. But what's that accountability? Then it's them not listening. Mm. Mm. Maybe not. This is a fight we've had actually a few times it's in like, our lives. I'm happy which to is, get which is, right now. <laughs> no, no, no. We've had this fight. It's there is a there is an uh, I think a um, I've been told I lack context. No, correct. I've told we've had this we've had this conversation where th there is a responsibility on on the human receiving advice or receiving whatever it is in life to take the humility and say you know this is what triggers me this is what doesn't trigger me on a very therapeutic level. But there is a very you know, basic thing on the person that's giving over the advice or the person that's giving over something, there is context to things. And the content does not matter if you're not saying it in, in a way that is palpable. Well, and I, there is a level. The challenge with times. Trump is that his whole, his dynamism, dy, 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 whatever, his <laughs> his dynamic nature yes. is is part of his essential leadership. His ability to get people behind the cause and understand what they're going through and speak to them is literally what he brings to the table. And yet he tends to isolate many, many, many people. Now you could, you could like make an argument that that's the leftist media or the, the corporate media, right? That that's projecting that and make Trump into a, into a victim of all that. It's, it's a good argument at the same time. Like if he wants to really be a great leader, he has to find, a way around that and he has not effectively found a way around that so that half the people in this country when he says get rid of illegals right the, what they hear is the opposite of what you said now, i don't think that that's what he's saying he doesn't seem to have it's his job to change that like what, what so explain that's his whole he's a politician yes it's yeah, his it's job, your to, job change that. to speak to it's the not, people and people to be able to it's not the people behind him's job to do that it's that's his job he's literally positioning himself that way and if he's not effectively accomplishing that then he's doing a poor job which is okay it doesn't Trump doesn't right. have to be perfect at everything the question is, is like it's just like with Vivek I hear the same exact like I heard the same thing and I'm like these people don't listen like but what, what is wrong but with that? I, I think that that's true I think that that's for sure true right and I think that 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 but at the same time if Vivek I don't I don't know him you met him if he doesn't take a moment to take responsibility for his part in that the way in which people misunderstand he him. Did. He said, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. So, so then he's not going to get anywhere. Meaning it's true. The media is biased. They want to present yeah. the Republicans in a yeah. certain light. They're driven by very, very specific interests. It's obvious to anyone who's watching, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have to find a way around that. If you want to succeed, you have to find a way around that or else what right. you are is you're basically what a lot of Republicans are, which is that they're kind of like happy to be in second place and complain about the media, which is what Republicans have done it's, for twenty it's, years. It's also like another. It's yeah. also like another thing. Like being being right or saying the truth, like doesn't matter if no one's listening. 
No, some people do listen. Uh, some people, some people do, but the ones, but but you're, but the ones that are listening are the ones that you have behind you, anyways. So the question is, All right, is I, like, I've said it's, it's, so the question is, is like, isn't the whole point of of let's say you know speaking the truth and speaking you know being you know right in terms of more truth to power, yeah. truth to power and. Isn't the whole point to try to get the people that maybe don't understand or the people that are not understanding yeah, to no, get them right. to... The point because is... What's the, yeah, because yeah, what's the idea of preaching to the people that you already have? Right, so I, I, I agree with that. I was just more bringing out a point that once someone doesn't like you and, and they make a judgment, it doesn't make a difference how much you're saying something that's reasonable, but you're saying they don't like you for a reason. But again, Trump's liability is not that he doesn't win over the 30% of hardcore left-wing people in the United right. States. Right. His middle. liability is the middle is 30. the 10 to 20% yeah, yeah. that's in the middle right. that he loses and he has to find a way to adapt and he has not found a way to adapt and when he loses you think he's a losing? lot of his oh, no. no no no, no. I, I I, that's you. not a prediction at all. No no, oh. I didn't mean it that way. No no no, that's I got not. it. You're saying when it happens. Yeah. When it has happened that yeah. he's lost, he's been very like petulant and yeah, 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 babyish like... and it and and, and it rubs yeah. people the wrong way and, and people yeah. get over it. Anyway, I don't know if Anyways, you want to like... Yeah. Um, I actually just got to get your opinion. You're familiar with Norman Finkelstein? No. Oh, you don't even know who he is? No. no that is either. You don't? Oh, you guys are literally in a different... Like, By the way, on. I just wanted this as a total joke. Yeah. Um, He's like telling us like we're on a different planet, like we live yeah. under a rock. Like he will text me randomly like once like once a week. Oh, God. Like some oh, random God. stuff, okay? He texted me last night oh. and I don't know how much you know about this, like what, where you are in culture and movies. Yeah. There's a movie called Barbie that came out, like, you know, whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. No, and by the way, no. <laughs> no, this is not a joke. Label didn't know this. He, 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 I knew there was a movie there, Barbie that came out. What okay, are you talking about? That's only because Margot Robbie was in it. No, I, well, I heard the movie Barbie, that and Oppenheimer. And anyways, and, and, and Oppenheimer, and he asks me, he texts me, he's like, am I supposed to know who this guy Ken is? And I and I didn't know where this uh, this question came from. Yeah. But he texts me, and I'm like, well, who's Ken? Like, I don't even know. He's like, no, some fictional character. And I'm like, yes, like, he's probably the most, like, like of the past 10 years, like, of a of a character from a movie that is, like, famous. It's, Why it's, would like, I he's, know like, who top the hell that 10. is? <laughs> And like he's telling us, it's just ironic. You're telling us we live under a rock because you're no. worried about Norman Finkelstein. Whereas like 320 million people in America are like singing like songs about Ken, <laughs> like the most it's common a, like to clarify for character okay. in the entire world. And you had no idea who he was. I know. Yes, I don't. And I know things that are important. Okay. So okay. Norman that, Finkelstein. So now this is now this is labeled. No, no, no like, I get it. Okay, I I know oh, what you're talking about now. Oh, you googled him. Oh, okay, fine. So I know you're what talking about. I just didn't. It, oh, didn't so you do know what I'm talking about. I, I yeah. Yes. So to me, that I was just. I mean, not that, that I've read a lot, but I remember he's a big time self hating Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. like he really is like. Now uh, comes right. What's moral upstanding of? I think I have things in my brain that are important, and to me, Ken's not important. The no, other things are simple. important. No, no, it's nothing to do with that. It's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funny. So I was dating a girl, for, you know, over the last whatever previous. It's already been a little bit at this point, but she could not understand how every third date, probably on average. Yeah some sort of American culture-based thing that you experienced in your youth yeah. would come up and she'd be like, uh, Ernie and Bert or something. I'd be like, who's Bert? And she'd be like, wait one second, wait one second. And, and it never failed. Every single third, like second date. Like I, I'm and not he, even kidding how aggressive. She's like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm like, okay, no one knows who this is. I'm like, I'm telling you, you're... <laughs> And, and, I'm telling you, and, and, you, and then and then label would text me. I would get a text like once every like yeah, like once every like two weeks. Like, am I supposed to know who this is? I'm like, yes, you're supposed to know who he is. Like, you're <laughs> you're a, you're a almost thirty year old like white male in America. Like, you should know who these human beings are. I told her, Listen, I my my uh, I'm yeshivish. What can I do? <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Exactly. Literally, I grew up. Uh, oh yeah, there was this whole thing. I was supposed. I didn't know any of this. Somehow it came up that it was around Christmas time, something about Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa Claus. That's what it was I was looking for. Santa Claus. I, the girl said something about like how, like, she's like, are you going to go on a, on a sled or something like that? I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, would, would you go on a sled with Santa Claus? Or like something about that. Like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, I, what about Santa Claus? What, what does a sled have to do with a sled? It's Santa Claus. She's like, are you insane? I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. And then I remember you texted. And she's like, "You don't know like the uh, the chimney." I'm like, yeah, you texted me. You're like, you're like Shmully. Just like I, I just want to know that I'm not crazy here. Do you know where where Santa Claus comes in? I'm like, yeah, down the chimney. He's like, how do you know that? I'm like, how do I know that? <laughs> 
I'm freaking I human. Right. So, so much then, has been illuminated. So then I call my little sister. Yeah. And after she's like, Label, I have no idea any of these things, but like, I get where you're coming from on this one. Like, my friends would make fun of me also. Like, I also have no idea what you're talking about. It's just yeah. wild. It's it's such a wild concept. It is a little bit wild. It's, There's no question. It's like, it's like you were dropped out of, like, the Amazon. <laughs> like, you just, just plopped down. You just something. plopped down, like. I hear that. I totally hear that. Um, where else are we holding in the world? Where else are we holding in the world? We're not yeah. talking about Norman Finkelstein. Norman Finkelstein. That guy. What's, this, what? That's the type of person that I... He just did a big debate with uh, Lex Friedman. Who is this yeah. person? Norman this... Finkelstein is someone that is... He's the definition of a self-hating Jew. That's the, literally the what's only his, way What's his background? Like, what's his... Like, he's if a, you're, he's give me, a professor give me... officially who doesn't have tenor because he was, like, kicked out of, like... Where? The college he went to. He was at a decently big okay, uh, professor, it. but he didn't get tenor. They, like, kind of got rid of him. He's not allowed to enter Israel. He's staunch anti-Israel person, like... Claims, you know, Gaza and Hamas. He wrote on October 7th that it warms his heart to see. Oh, he was that guy? Yeah, to he see was that how guy. the Hamas freedom fighters have broken out of their concentration. Like, he's just, so he actually just went and debated uh, Benny Morris, who's like a biggest, you know, Israeli historian, and uh, Destiny, who's like this big, uh, who, interestingly enough, is like a big liberal, but like, super pro Israel in this whole thing. Yeah. Um, so the, on Lex Friedman, like that was actually a very interesting uh, thing. So that's why I just brought it up because we were talking about the self hating Jew concept and yeah. it's just, there's, I don't know what it is there, but it's, it's unbelievable. It's like not even to be believed. It's like, yeah. And I, I hate, you can't throw around that term very easily. I hate when people like throw around the term anti-Semite, just like, you know, like it's very easy to throw around those terms. It's like throwing around the term racist, you know? Whenever someone is like says something you don't like, it's yeah. automatically you're an anti-Semite. Yeah. Um. So self-hating Jew, I would say, is a similar thing, but like I don't see any other way to like kind of. He's a conflict with himself. I mean, that would be a, that would be a different way of saying it, but a way too nice way of saying it, I think. Right. Like he really hates himself. Like he hates his Jewish identity. I feel like. Anyways, um, I was speaking with you about another thing that I wanted to bring up. Um. We've been talking about this uh, before, um, like the mask, like toxic masculinity, yeah. and like toxic, like and toxic femininity, and yeah. like nowadays everything. It's like anyone that has a problem that people don't like, he's a narcissist. They're, they're, we just like throw terms at people to kind of like just like throw them away. Like he's, you know, uh, you know, a bigot. He's a misogynist. He's a this. He's right. a that. Without any like actual introspection into what the actual word means, this is genocide. Can we like define what genocide means before we, right? we? We we're very good at doing that these days. Like specifically, it's like a great. It's a concept that's literally taken over. I feel like society, yeah. and specifically with the Andrew Tate and that rise and like you know, these words are being thrown around. Can we get some definition? I'm curious from you on what toxic masculinity is. Yeah. And what toxic femininity actually is. Right. In your opinion. Well, I promised I wouldn't talk as a, as an expert. I'm definitely Okay, not, not an as an expert, as my friend. I'm thinking about so I I think that a lot of Okay, so there's there's inherent power. This is the way I think about it. There's inherent power within men and women. They, men and women have like this very specific paradigm of power both over people of the, the same sex and people of the opposite sex people that they're attracted to people that they're not attracted to and and in in a fu in functional relationships the the two parties use their masculinity which is oftentimes like expressed through uh you know self-sacrifice and power and strength and conviction Right, um, the kind of things that we kind of like associate, even though a woman could exude those things, right? But that's those are the kind of things we like associate as masculinity, and and then there's like the power of femininity, which has to do with like uh, being seductive and ex um, uh, inviting and nurturing and warm. So when you're in a relationship where, or you're in a circumstance where those that koach is used to the betterment of the relationship and the people that are in it, so then that's good, right? But then there's moments where um, either person, 
will use those power frames for their in selfish ways, right? Meaning a man will use power to dominate or a woman will use her power of seduction to, you know, dysregulate, let's say, right? right? Or to manipulate, right? right? So then that's, that's not good. That's not functional. Where you get into toxicity is where there's a lot of times it's like a reactionary kind of thing. Meaning like if people don't appreciate the power of femininity and then they struggle with the 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 um the power disparity that they see in women and then they 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 create this odd uh superiority of let's say women right that as if like i don't know women are better at being men than men are or that the things that men do are not valuable and only the things that women do are valuable then it starts to become like deeply toxic so you're saying women taking on men's roles without using their own roles and use the using the power that they were innately given that is where you feel that there that's where toxicity comes in when it's they not that in, women who take on male roles because there are women that are like qualified to do that that their 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 orientation is to do that i don't mean like sexual orientation i just mean they're like their way of being right is like to be a leader Right. right, which is not common, but like it happens. I mean, I mean, it's not as common as it is with men, but there are women that are amazing leaders. Right, right. So that's wonderful. Right, that's not problematic. And oftentimes, a woman, let's say, who's a great leader, right, will leverage her femininity in in a really powerful way. Right, and I think about like women that I've that I've admired that have been in leadership positions, which is not as common for a man to be kind of like in a in a power disparity with a woman when we're in a position where a woman's like our boss, it can kind of make us uncomfortable. But when they have a capacity, when you encounter a woman who's in a leadership position and within that context of leadership, she's like warm and nurturing and loving and yet holds you accountable and says it straight, as a man, you can respond really well to that if you can get over yourself, right? And that is good, so that's not a bad thing. It's not per se about roles. It's more like when women, when, I don't want to make this because a lot of this emerges on the male side. That's what, like, you know, uh, toxic masculinity is like a, a term that's thrown around. So, but we're talking about it on the female side, right? Partially, we were talking about this because of like your whole Flatbush Girl thing, yeah. right? And the the conflict back and forth, and like the 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 premise that we should, in order to get men to care about an aguna, we're, the the solution is. I'm only going to use this as an example. I don't want to like like uh, stir up controversy yeah. or, or maybe maybe i do because it's good for you um so <laughs> i'm, I'm so, off the flavish world topic okay right so is it okay if, says, I, by the way, if I is it okay as of now i'm not clipping this <laughs> okay fine so is it okay if i use it as an example please go right sure. okay fine so let's say like okay so we want men to care about this woman who's in aguna right so the solution to doing that is to for women not to go to the mikvah and withhold sex right that is toxic femininity because what it's doing is it's taking the power that women have over men and using it in a really manipulative, like overtly toxic manner, right? So you're saying, okay, well, what would be the proper use of femininity? The proper use of femininity is for women to like make men feel really good and inspire them to care about the aguna. Like don't give them less sex. I don't mean this in a crude way, but give them more sex or the promise of it. I'm in. Right? I, I, <laughs> guys, this is the movement. We're starting this movement. We're starting the movement. We're starting the movement. T-shirts are getting ready to be made. The merch happening ASAP. Right? I'm just using Free it. Free Agunos. More sex today. But if, if I, again, it's like a funny way of framing it, and I'm going to get yeah. in trouble for this. But I think that it's a good ex, it's a good metaphor, right? Because that's the power that women have. The women have women have power to inspire us to do remarkable things. Women have the power to inspire men to die for them. Well, that's to do how, really stupid things that's, and destroy their lives, also. Okay, but that's I mean, okay. That's, that's manipulative. Yeah. But I'm yeah. saying, but in a good way. No, kind, yeah. well, in yeah, a good yeah. way, women give us. I mean, in a in a in a more like nuclear family right a woman creates and nurtures a home and that home is a is a thing is a mechanism that a man is willing to like literally kill themselves to support and protect that's beautiful 
That's awesome. And I'm not saying that a woman has to be in the house and the man has to be outside the house. I don't think it's, I don't think it has to get broken down to that, even though that's commonly what happens because women tend to be oriented to like be nurturing and be mothers right. and men are oriented to be hunters and to go out and to protect and to, and to feed, right? It's not always that way, right? Especially today's society, it's becoming less and less like that. The lines get blurred, but for the most part it is, right? But it's not the point. The, f the point that I'm making is that there's inherent power within that. And if you don't acknowledge that, and then the only way in which you can have power is, let's say, where women withhold sex, right? That's almost like a very, it's almost like ascribing like a male quality nice. to a woman. Why? Because men are strong, so therefore they withhold, right? Women, they're, they're, so, they're meant to like nurture and inspire. So like you're trying to like, you're, you're using it's almost this, denying your actual power, like your right, exactly, power. exactly. It's what you're saying, it's it's very much denying their their inherent power, like it's almost, and yeah. it comes from that kind of suggestion, comes from a distorted mindset, and that's where to me it's toxic. It's the same thing with men, right? Like if a man, if where toxic masculinity comes into place is where a man wants to be masculine, but it's not in the name of a cause or to to uh to support protect and provide for right except for himself it's just about him getting his cars and his girls and his this and conquering and like that's what masculinity is i'm not saying those things are not reflected in masculinity right. but you've already layered a uh a, a distortion of the whole thing and it's tragic can you explain it's, that again that last piece one more time men men draw energy from conquering right, right okay. a man goes out to uh, be a real estate agent, right? And he wants to sell the most houses. Are you talking about me right, right now? Just no, I, no, he said he was selling houses, <laughs> oh. right? <laughs> not, not million, million dollar buildings. I just wanted to be close enough to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> right, so like he wants to sell the most houses. He wants to get, he wants to get the, he's very driven in that way. And he wants to do that because he wants to generate wealth. Mm -hmm. And he wants to generate wealth because he wants to be a leader in his community. And he wants to build a family and build a big house. Right. And men also have like these, like want to have a nice car. We have all these other things that emerge, which are not necessarily inherently bad, but those are all expressions of that desire to, to, to acquire value and exhibit that value and share that value. Right. That's like a men's, a man's nature. Now, when you strip out true masculinity, which is a man's capacity to be self sacrificing for his family and for his community and for his country. Right. So then, and right. you make it just about the acquisition of value. Right. So then that becomes toxic. Right. And oftentimes in those environments, there's like a denial of the value of what women bring to the table. And women are just objects to be acquired. They're just another thing. It's like taking away the, 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 when you take away the share factor of what you're like, that's really what it really comes. It's the selflessness. The selflessness when that's what really it comes what down saying. to. It becomes selfish. What? Right. When you take away all the selflessness. With oh, it, when you take away the selflessness, yes. it I mean, becomes the, toxic. The part yeah. to help other people, really. Yeah. And, and then Nate, like, basically it's just over just the only thing, like, a tremendous load of selfishness. Right. It comes like, on both funny. sides. Like you're saying, when it comes, when, when the woman is using their innate power of seduction or warm or warmness, invitingness, whatever, in order to get what they want, right? Not in order to inspire and to share, you know, this co-host with you in order to create you know, the man to be able to do things that he didn't believe he was able to do. Right. It's the same exact thing. And that's like where the toxic femininity comes in and the toxic masculinity comes in where a, a guy who is, you know, nature is to acquire and to create status and value and things of that nature within a society. But that's not really what's the actual, the actuality of like the actual value of the man is to take right. what he's gathering and to share it with the woman and to share it with his family and to share it with his country and share it with people so that everyone else can so he's protecting everyone else correct. not just himself correct right. exactly that's really the an answer and that's really what you happens know, masculinity is the ability to give and protect other people correct. be selfless yeah. not selfish yeah it's when that's you acquire all those things in order not to acquire them for you to feel right. good and for you to have them for, for yourself but cause. to acquire them so that that's other true. people can be so that other good. people could very good I, I love that it's okay Fantastic. Okay, good. No, it's, you have a way of, of putting things that are really, really good. That's oh, true. That's a Thank great you, way yeah. of breaking that down. Um, and I would say one more yeah. thing is that the problem in this society nowadays that I see and who am I to talk, but th that I see, talk right, Sorry. is that the toxic masculinity and toxic femininity, all this stuff gets thrown out. It's the same thing that as like the, the you know, equality of, you know, the, the, 
like you were saying is that there are women that have the orientation let's say 10 percent of women that have the orientation that have more you know let's say masculine qualities and then there are maybe 10 percent of men in society that have have you know more feminine qualities right, right. than the average male yeah, yeah right and that's okay like and that's how a society can function is that you know there's a regular re, there's a regular you know moderate form of this is how 90 percent of the you know society functions but we still allow for the other 10 percent to be the 10 percent that they are it's that nowadays we've created this equality of everyone needs to be 50 50 right where like the equality of you know exactly what a man is and a woman is has to be exactly the same on, for every single human being right every single you know every single woman has to have not only the ability to be a ceo but we have to have 50 50 of the amount of ceos in america right and it's, it's jordan peterson yeah. says it obviously it's like it, the equality of opportunity versus the equality of outcome yeah. it's like the equality of opportunity is what obviously Matters. everyone should everyone should have that but if you take but if you leave that at, at a societal level what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have the same 80 to 90 percent that society is going to fall as it is and you'll have the 10 percent of the stay-at-home dads, and I'm just making a generalization, but you'll have the stay-at-home dads and you'll have, you know, the 10% of CEOs that are women. Right. But, like, to then say that society itself is not functioning because women are not having the exact same, you know, just, yeah. percentages in the workforce or having the exact same percentages in, you know, the, the amount of money made or this, that, the other, whatever it is. And then to say that males are not having the same amount of percentages of being able to, you know, stay at home or being able to, you know, you know, do what they want with their day in, in certain ways. Right. It's like it's like, no, like that that's not society in itself is not an equal platform for 50 50 of every last thing. It's like there's a, yeah. it's like what or what's a woman I good at? What's a male good at? And like then it's interesting. You, know, you want to push like kindness and good things in the world, but we also can't. And like we really can't also at the same time push real life. Uh, we also at the same time have to push real life. Right. I think like we've come into this thing where everyone has to feel good. And I'm not saying I'm saying like a tremendous profound statement here, but we've come to this place in the world where everyone needs to feel good when that's not real life. Cause some people don't always feel good. And right. that's reality. Not everyone it's gets also, a trophy. Think, like, yeah. And we've, yeah, I, I just, how does that correlate to like that? Where do you see meaning? Do you think of that's what's driving the misorientation of all this stuff? Because we're trying to like the meaning, like the equity piece. Because yeah, I think want, everyone wants to. We want everything to be comfortable for everyone. Yeah, I think it has time. to be equal. Everything has to be equal. It can't be you know survival of the fittest. We don't let survival of the fittest happen. So here, let me. Let me we don't. This is what I was thinking while while survival you guys were of the fittest would mean that. Yeah. Do you under, I mean, it's very clear. I'm not saying anything profound. DEI, the whole concept of it, is that it's not survival of the fittest. It's 100% right. now. We are busy flying planes and suggesting who the pilots are based on their, like, race and ridiculous things when it's like, dude, the only fucking person I want fly my plane is the person who's going to land me there with me intact. Like, right. that's all I care about. And right. it's obvious, like, that's the most... The crazy part is we're, we're putting people's lives at stake not just that. That's also in the medical field. Right. For, for we're this. not obsessed. Uh, Ridiculous. Basically, is, is we're not. Our obsession is not with making society better or, or making ourselves better. The obsession is creating some sort of 50-50 that everyone is the exact same. Yeah. In some regard, and you males know what's and females are not the exact same. All of the distortions. This is just my observation. All of the distortions that you see in this area are because people, and this is particularly in the, on, on the left side politically often, but not only because you see this on the right also. People want an ideal and they want it immediately, right? Like what, what drives DEI? What drives DEI is that there's a group of people that are invested in the fact that there are probably societal distortion, dis, um, um, discrepancies. discrepancies that, that cause there to be more, I don't know, white surgeons over black surgeons. Right. So, so, I know what you're gonna say. This is so we want to fix that. The truth is, if you if you track things out over 150 years, it's going to be equal, because that's the reality of like just human evolution. Like it's not those, but it takes a couple generations. But it takes time. But people aren't patient with it, and they get very, very kind of like fixated on that singular piece. They need it to happen now, and what they do is they kind of like work against themselves. It's the same thing with like all this like distorted feminism, right? If you look at the world. Right, like, okay, I'm not saying there wasn't a need for like the suffrage, the fem the women's suffrage movement, or other movements within feminism that like, like, disencumbered women from like a, a society that really like, in many ways mistreated them. 
even though there were advantages to that society for women as well. But but what happened is that they wanted to go so far that they take this space where women are, the only solution is to make men, women like succeed only in male form, right? Or they can only, they're only worthwhile if they're doing male things, right? Like a woman who 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 raises a beautiful family is almost a loser. A loser, <laughs> and a woman who's a CEO is like the greatest thing ever. When in like maybe it's both. I don't know. Maybe it's really cool when there's a woman who's a CEO and she's really great at it, and if she can be a mom also, that's great. And if her like disposition is to like be a CEO and not to be a mom, yeah. maybe that's also okay. And over time, as society evolves, there might be more and more women who are CEOs. But like, no, I need it to be now, right? And the foundation stone of that, by the way, is a faith in God. But you know what you're saying? That's so interesting. We, we yeah. discussed yeah. this. What do you say? The 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 end part. You said the faith in God. Yeah. If you don't have faith in God and you are your own God, then you need your ideal reality to manifest within your lifetime. Mm. Yes. That's, so that's what I was saying. There was another thing uh, that I was talking with you um, about a little while ago where we were talking about nowadays the, the lack of uh, people willing to sacrifice anything in their life is almost is so minimal. You have people in our generation, they don't understand the concept at all of sacrifice and time and how much effort it takes Patience. to get something, right? And, and and to go, you know, to really put together a really productive special, to get a special outcome, a very worthy, noble outcome. They have no understanding of the sacrifice that it takes. Now, if you think about it, our grandparents came from the war. Right. In 1945, they had fucking nothing. And they went, they also wanted to be doctors, attorneys, all this stuff. Well, guess what? They didn't become those for the most part. Their kids became those things right, for, right. for the most part. Right. They put in 40 right. years. And they didn't scream boo-hoo because they, they were carpenters and seamstresses. 40 like. years. Right, right. Morning to night, barely seeing their kids waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning, putting the, you know, their way of showing their kids love was putting a towel on the radiator so that their kid woke up and didn't even see them and pulled the towel off and had a warm towel. That's right. And then came back at 1 o'clock in the morning right. so that us... We can go to you know have these. I mean, it goes back to the the entire sorry to cut off the entire like society we live in now, which is just instant gratification. Yes, but my point is, is that the solution is what I think you're saying. Tell me if I'm wrong. That nowadays they want it. People that are coming in, that are immigrants that are coming in, they want that this second. They don't, they don't realize that there are grandparents walking. Well, it's in even the pro. Too. Well, even the pro. Even the 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 strong pro, like unrestricted immigration movement, is is also all of these things are kind of somehow tend to like circle back to this issue is like, are you willing to allow the evolutionary process of human reality and society becoming better and better to play out over a long stretch of time that will supersede your lifetime or right. not, right? And most of these, most people today are not. And then, right, what's fascinating is that our, like the people that are just older, I'm just older than you, right? And the people that are just older than me yeah. look back at the generation that's just below you, which seems to be the generation that has the hardest time with this, by the way. No, for sure. The generation beneath that seems to be like more, yeah. right? Like it's it, it seems to be better at that. They seem to be able to understand. But there's an interesting generation that like just doesn't seemingly, I'm sure it's not, not to overgeneralize, but seemingly doesn't understand that like A plus B plus C plus D like it, there's a step yeah. and there's a step along the way. And the entirety, like at least of the American experiment is that evolution. And if you, if you don't allow that to happen, it upends the entirety of the system. Right. Yeah. And it creates a lot of problems. And I think I really going back to what I said before, and I, this is something I've spent a lot of time thinking, but I really think it's true. And like people quote on the right all the time, quote um, John Adams, when he talked about a moral people, that yeah. the, the American system required a moral people. I, I, I think the foundation stone of that idea is is not about a religious morality. I, I don't think that that's the case. I, I, I think that a religious morality is one, I'm a religious guy, I, I believe in the Torah, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think that's what he's talking about. I'm talking, I think he's talking about a fundamental sense of faith in God, in a higher power that's, and not even just in a higher power, like a power that's outside. That's obviously a term for my, for my day job, right? But but um, but like a sense of like belonging to something greater than self right. that allows selflessness, that allows you to then trust the process. And when you don't have that, when you don't have a sense that there's some kind of greater good that you are part of, then what you end up with is toxic masculinity, toxic femininity, you know, 
insane immigration policy, insane DEI policies. All those things are driven out of this thing. Like I need perfection. I need nirvana to happen today because it needs to happen today because I'm going to die and I am everything instead of realizing I am just a link in a chain along the way. Yeah. And I think that it, it's interesting because I think some of what makes the Jewish people, the Orthodox, the, I don't want to say Orthodox, I don't like that word anyway, but like Jewish people that are rooted in faith, one of the one of the things that makes that community, our community, very successful is the fact that the idea of being a link in the chain is not contrary to our consciousness. Like there's a, a certain thing. awareness that we understand that, right? And that is what allows us to kind of move through and cultures that right. that lose that just drink my water. lose. I did drink your water, yeah. I'm thirsty. Um, <laughs> all right, no, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Well, most cultures don't even need it. Just for their, I mean, it's not part of their culture. It's like it doesn't have any... What, faith? No, not faith, the, the link concept. Like, the concept you're talking about, how our religion and people that are tied into religion, with yeah. Judaism, there's a very specific link. I'm saying... I think us, most people do need it. I think everyone I needs think it. I think you need it, but I don't think most people... For us, it makes a lot of sense. It's very like each... For the last five that like were the jewish people right. each of us is a link to the next generation we're right. very focused on that i'm talking about right. in the outside world for not jewish people right or not right. i think if 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 the if the world could learn something from the from the jewish community it it would be this oh that's that is that's what I, think. I actually hear that very much right, we got to wrap because it's fun, late yeah. Don't even yeah, i really seriously. appreciate it guys thank you so much for watching um i think <laughs> i forgot a quick wrap, but yeah. by the way pause for one second no i really no, appreciate it by the way one other thing, first of all, two quick things. Number one, if you're watching this, if you could please like, subscribe, and uh, if you could please like, subscribe, and comment. I don't, I don't think I even said that originally. Um, anything else I forgot? First of all, Menachem, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for coming. I really, really me. appreciate it. Um, no, really, I love yeah, taking you. This is interesting you. as hell. Well, this is like, yeah, the most my brain's worked in months. Yeah, that's good. We're getting your brain rocking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to hit your brain. One going. step at a time. All right, guys. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank all you so right. much.